What's going on, guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to Beauty and the Beast. I'm chilling out with my, my lady, and we just got done hanging out and watching The Last of Us HBO Max Episode 1. We wanted yep. to come back and, and do a little bit of talking about it, give you our pros and cons, what we liked, what we didn't like. And uh, what do you think, Peanut? What do you think the show? you think the show was a go? Uh, yeah, I think it had a lot of similarities to the game. Okay. Um, I was kind of feeling, I don't know, I wasn't like super excited about it like I thought I would be. Um, I was kind of like, oh, I kind of know what's going to happen. And some things have changed. Like, it's not like exact one-to-one -to, -one to the game. And I don't know. It's like, I'm not, I'm not super into it right this minute. I, I, I feel like overall the direction of it was great. I think that it felt very, very similar. They did make some changes because, of course, you got to stretch out a story. You're not playing through a video game. Um, overall, the feel was there at the beginning when the outbreak happened. Um, uh, that, that whole, they kind of changed the whole aspect at the beginning of the game. I'm not going to spoil it for people right now, but something completely changed from the moment um, that uh, Sarah woke up and there was something completely different going on that you wouldn't expect from the game. I didn't like that as much. What do you think about their casting choices, Peanut? <sighs> I really don't feel like the little girl is like Ellie-esque enough. Right now, maybe really? it'll change. Well, why do you think that? Or is it just is it just Ellie? Um, uh, really, that's the only one that's bothering me. Like hardcore, the, like yeah. Okay, so Sarah initially bothered me because I feel like you know when when you uh, race swap and gender swap characters, you're doing it just to tick boxes rather than staying true to the original idea, even though the guy who made this game was behind it. And and I don't like Neil Druckmann, I'll just be totally honest. I can't stand him after what he did in part two. I'll never play that game. But knowing how deeply invested he is in things like feminist frequency with, with Anita Sarkeesian and this whole ideology of putting unattractive women and, and, and putting... POC everywhere you can. It's just an agenda to me. And it, it, it takes away the value of what the original story was. It'll confuse people, and it just didn't make sense to me to have uh, his daughter race swapped. It didn't feel the same. And, and I just feel like, you know, in any property, you want to keep people as close to the originals as possible. Joel and Tommy, to me, don't feel like Joel and Tommy. You know, they feel Hispanic now, and they sound normal. They sound like they normally do, but it, they, it's almost like they just, just for the sake of doing it, swap them out. And Ellie, oh, goodness gracious. I don't know this character. I never watched Game of Thrones, but her name is Bella Ramsey. She looks like she has Down syndrome. It takes me out of feeling like it's Ellie when this character looks so different from everything we've ever ex uh, experienced with this character. And it's a really hard pill to swallow. She really sounds like Ellie. She has that energy, that fuck you energy, uh, you know, that I'm going to fight to the end type of energy. But I feel like it's like you take away from something so great by changing so much about characters that so many know about. Mm. Did you feel any yeah. of that? Yeah. yeah, I mean, like... Look at Tommy in the game. Look at Tommy now. Just so you know, Tommy is the uh, Terminator from the last Terminator film. Uh, the Hispanic guy who was like the Border Patrol agent. That's Tommy now. It just doesn't feel like Tommy. Um, they don't... Uh, they're okay. They're not like... You know, it's not like, oh yeah, that's Joel for sure. That's like the perfect cast... No, it's not like that, but it's not like super, like it takes me out of the experience of Joel. Tommy, I don't feel is as important just because he's not really going to, well, I don't know how much he's going to be in the show, but in the game, it's very, 
little that you see him and deal with him. I, I think Ellie, that... it's just, I get Ellie, she's like, yeah, I'm a fighter, I don't care about you, whatever. She has that energy, but I still, I'm not convinced she's Ellie. Why? I don't know, I just, I don't feel it, I don't feel it. Well, I mean, I think that based on the reviews and based on the way I feel, overall, I'd say episode one was a hit. I mean, these are all just critiques that I personally think that producers and directors should stay away from when you're adopting or adapting a pre-existing property. You know, I'm the kind of guy where I love to see everybody, you know, get their shot. But if I don't want to see them create a white Black Panther, you know... I didn't think that the all-female Ghostbusters idea was a good idea, and it turned out to be true. I just feel like if people know something, they experience something, they enjoy it. Look, I named my daughter Ellie. What what, if, what happens if they swap Ellie out? <laughs> and I tell my daughter, yeah, that's the character I named you after. It's like you already have an experienced cast. You have a, a pre-existing world with characters, and I just feel like to go out of your way to flip-flop those for the people who actually supported the property for years for a decade who supported the property and made it what it is and just to take characters and put them in a frying pan and flip them like pancakes and whatever comes down is what you get i think it kind of is a little bit of a smack in the face to the people who made the property that's why like the whole witcher the new witcher thing the new lord of the rings thing it's just like they tick boxes to me and they want to virtue signal that hey we can give every we can we can change something that already exists and and we're going to put all this new stuff in and we hope you like it but we know that the property doesn't exist that way initially and so we automatically have a resistance to that change because we know it's not going to meaningfully push the property forward it's just there to virtue signal and to say hey everyone we got representation brave and bold but the show so far is pretty good. Yeah, it's it's the Last of Us feel for sure. Um, the you know the way the guards are set up and the sneaking around they got to do and people they're dealing with. It's and very it's pretty similar. brutal. Oh yeah, it's pretty brutal. It, it's a it's a nicely um, concocted concoff- concophony of violence. I mean, there wasn't of, that much, you know, action in the first episode, I don't think. Yeah, but they're not pulling pulling back on blood and yeah, for sure. beating people down and neck breaking and all this crazy stuff. So I think it's good. I think it's a good show. Um, I've got to mentally prepare myself for any changes that may be coming down the pike. I'm still anxious to see what um, Neil Druckmann and uh, what's her face? Ashley Johnson, what their roles are, roles are yeah. in this show, uh, what they're going to actually be doing, who they're going to be, if it's going to be meaningful, are they, just, are they just going to be throwaways? Hopefully they get a little bit of respect and are able to, to have kind of a meaningful role. That's something I would like to see. We'll see. I hate that it's um, a weekly thing, though. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's something that we can uh, we can enjoy, but we wanted to get back and let you guys know our thoughts. Uh, the Last of Us so far, I think it's going to be a hit. I think it's going to be powerful. I think people are really going to go back and play the game after they experience this for the first time. They got the original soundtrack. Yes. In, in the That's game. like the coolest part. The, the soundtrack from the game is in it. Like if you've ever played Factions, a multiplayer uh, that part of the game is there. It's so incredible, so awesome. You hear the music when he's inside his little house, his little apartment, trying to figure out what he needs to do. And it, it just, uh, it was riveting to me. I'm super excited to see what they do with it next. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe uh, I'll be in the, in the in the show as a new character. They just swap him out and put me in there. We'll see what happens. I'll yeah. be there. Maybe I can be uh, the chick uh, who kill who kills Joel in, in part part, part two of the season. Yeah, hire, hire me, Neil. PLC. <laughs> we'll see where this leads. Hopefully, it stays good. Yeah. Well, that's what I think. You got anything else to cover? Is that that pretty much you? Uh, no, because I don't want any spoilers. It's brand new. It just came out. Yeah, we have. we'll talk spoilers after the whole like thing is out. 
Yeah. All right. Well, you guys, let us know what you think about The Last of Us in the comment section below. Of course, I want to leave that caveat. I'm not trashing the show. It's just my personal opinion on swapping out characters for no apparent reason. So far, the show looks to be really close and true to the original vision. Uh, the story seems to follow fairly closely to the same kind of experience you have in the game, down to leg shots and down to, you know, getting stabbed in certain places and all these things that we expect in the game at all. It happens. So it looks really, really good, close to that. Uh, and it might be the best year for video game adaptations of all times. Between this and that Mario movie, it's looking like 2023 is going to be a hit. I can't wait for that. Yeah, I think, I think we're in. I think we're in for a good surprise. You guys, make sure you leave a like. You know, that's a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.